All right, next picture. Peter, tell about the McKenzie brothers, the dopers, the smokers. Oh, the smokers. Yeah. Graham Gibson and Graham Gibson. Anderson. Yeah, you know more about them than I do. Go ahead. Anderson couldn't sail sober. Seriously. He has to be drunk to get on the boat. Yeah, they, they, they would sail off to the side and, and, and have a little pot in between races. Oh, they were in space. Look at this guy. Who's that? It's me. Speedy. What are you doing up there? No. Speedy. Where was I here? Where was I here? Oh, the later was the oh that's uh, Robert B. Lee went in in the middle. And that is. Mark Hare on the bottom. <laughs> Robert B. Lee, and, and that's. Uh, Mike Godwin. Who's that I'm on the right again? Oh, that's Doc and Rob. That's Bernie and Kyle. Oh, no, that's not Doc. That's. Uh, Kruger. Oh, that's Kruger. Kruger, Kruger yeah. Kruger. 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 Right. And I put my picture on there too, because I was third. You know, but nobody remembers second door. Nineteen eighty-eight was also the World in Turkey Point, Canada, and it was run by George and Ingrid Anger, whose picture you saw on the bottom there, right there. That was a really nice event. If you go to the next picture, where you will. Please, yep. See, they, they had a compound there and the cottages all around, that's where we all lived. And uh, no yacht club was involved, they basically ran that themselves. If you look at the teams here, the guy on the right there is from New Zealand. The next guy up is me. And Larissa on the left. Who's the next guy? It's Brian uh, from New Zealand, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Danny, you look young. <laughs> you must have recognized you. That's my daughter right across from me. She's 21 now. Doc went up there too, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Cal. Yeah, that was a very nice event. And I mean, party time every night. And the boys from New Zealand, they really know how to party. And they were set up. I guess in New Zealand it blows a lot. They were, they were set up for heavy air. And we only had one day of that. And that day they looked good. But the other days they just gave up and did party time. But we had a good time there. I think 30 plus boat attended. And I wound up being ninth in the world. Mikey was 10th and Danny was 11th. We stayed close together. <laughs> I was ahead of you. All right, picture 33. Tell me how Doc made it, uh, ended up at Niagara Falls. Yeah, Niagara Falls. Oh, yeah. Yeah, then we had a free for all race. What was that for? The turkey point. Uh, yeah, and, and Doc, Doc won it, right? I won it. Oh, you won it. <laughs> But Doc somehow got the wrong turn and almost sailed to Niagara Falls. <laughs> but they sent somebody after you to chase him, right? Is that the boat I bought when I went over the falls? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Kenny, that's the boat that you sell. Exactly. And, and Greg Goodall won the worlds in Canada. That is George there and Doc Beatty on the left and Ingrid in behind. <coughs> And at that time, the Australians brought over the Mark III. That was the first fiberglass production boat that they made by Jim Boyer. And picture 34, is that what we got ready? That is Greg Goodall. And the reason that I mentioned him, he was one of the nicest guys you could ever meet. And you know, this was still the time when we sailed aluminum mast and stuff like that, and I wanted to build a carbon mast because they started in there, and you wouldn't believe how many phone calls he made to coach me to lay up the first carbon mast, you know. That thing is still sailing out here, by the way. And then we went to... Oh yeah, here's... <laughs> See, see, that is, on the right, that is one of the Mark 3's that I bought from the Worlds up in 
in Turkey Point. Mark II. Mark II. Mark II, whatever it was. And, and on the left, you, you see Danny's colored sail, you could never miss him. And on the, on the bottom left, that's when I went to a world championship in Germany. And I read it a pim. Well, that's the one you sold to me? Oh, thank you. No, 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 that one, that was a rented boat. And they had 80 boats on the line for the, for the world championship, but they had an inner course and an outer one. On, <laughs> on the inner one, they had the Hobie 16 Europeans. And I never knew that the Baltic was so cold. And I was on the ley line going to the mark, and the waves were so big, if an able was a couple hundred feet ahead of you, it would disappear completely. You couldn't see it. And I saw a Hobie coming downwind, going the opposite direction of me. But while I didn't see him, he must have jived, and when I come off the crest of the wave, I crashed right down onto the OB-16, and both halls looked somewhat like that. <laughs> and I told the guy, whatever you do, don't kick me off, because I knew that damn thing would sink. So they sailed me into a beach, and the, the unfortunate <laughs> thing was, I had cut my foot on a wire or something, and you know, when the, when, when the blood mixes with water, you know, it looks a lot worse than it is, you know. But they sailed me into the beach, and of course it was a nude beach. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I had so much help with all the nudies come around to help me get the boat out, get the water out of it, and then we had to get a dolly and walk it all about a mile up the road. But I got a lot of help, it was very interesting. <laughs> Alright, what is the next picture? What number picture is it? Do you know? I can't tell the numbers from the slideshow. So okay. You just have to say next picture. Alright. That on the top left, that's me, then it's Danny again. Oh yeah, and here's a, a sail that he's How many years do you have that sail? You see how that sail is cut back? Years. Oh, that, that was to help the top fall off when you, I guess in heavy air or whatever it was. That was his design. I guess Henry Bossett built it. And he tried it for a bunch of years. And on, that, on the bottom left, that is, Robert Beatley at Lake Garda, he went to a world championship there. Okay, 1990, that was the year Danny was supposed to win. But Meinhard Benkel from Canada came out of the woodwork and it was a light air regatta and it was all up for the last race. And I, I never forget, Meinhard was ahead of him and Danny would throw the tiller down, make him believe he would tack or something, you know, but he never got mine out, out of his stride. And Minot's name wound up being on that trophy. And at that night, Meinhardt invited the whole crew, what did we have, 20 boats maybe? He invited them to his house and we had a few drinks. And then he, I said, what are we gonna have? And he said, hamburgers and hot dogs. I said, my not, you know, we don't come all the way from New Jersey to eat hamburgers and hot dogs. And he said, what do you want? We want steak, I said. And guess what, we had steak. <laughs> 1991 is the year that Michael won at Roden Point. He, he won it on the lightweight BIM that you saw pictures of before that I had sailed for years, and when I was gonna get rid of it, I got a Mark II. You know, I, before I, somebody wanted it, right, Mike? And I called you, and then you, you took it, and you won the North America. Peter, which slide do you want to go? Yeah, you know, it's, that's the boat. It's Ben Hall. Yeah. Uh, 1992, Hurricane Andrew won in Toronto. It blew so bad, every morning we'd come out of the hotel and the street lights would all hang 45 degrees from the wind. We never sailed, we never got the boats off the trailer. 1993, 
Robert B. Ling won again on Rumblefish number two. The Shore Boys had built a knockoff of a bin. This North American was on a Chesapeake Bay in Virginia, out of the Wave River Yacht Club. Mike still talks about how nice it was to sail there. Flat water and what get, got windy, you had long rolling waves. We all marveled at how Robert Beeling knew how to sail those waves. But then again, he kept his boat down there, and I guess he had practice with Henry Wilson. But Michael still talks about how nice it was to sail there. The only thing that you always had, you would always hear tum, 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 when you sailed. There were so many jellyfish in the water, and they hit the boards. You know? That's good, I have a lot of jellyfish. Sure. Then we went to 1994. That was Canada's turn. But <laughs> no, we didn't have a picture for that. No, go, go back. We'll get to that. Uh, but we had the race in Lake Canandaigua, and, and, and Robert Smith of Canada won it. And he doesn't sail anymore. He beat out Robert and Mike, who were the other two champions that were there. In 95, Robert Beeling won again, and we don't remember where. And then, then we got into a whole new area of Abel's. Ben Hall won it at Newport. Ben beat Mike by a point or so. And what we remember from that regatta is then we had just shoved off and a front came through after we had shoved off and to go to the race course. And Ben sat on Goat Island and Mike and I slugged it out in a harbor between all the moorings and the boats. And Doc wound up upside down in front of the museum and they fished it out. Minot Banker ran ashore and he damaged his boards and rudders and he was never seen again in any North Americans after that. Uh, you know, as I said, said that Ben's new area, and uh, Ben is here celebrating his 10th anniversary. 10 years ago, he came to the lake to try an A-boat. I knew Ben from the A-DN sailing from before, and he tried it and got hooked. And I think he's in it 10 years now, and he's on his 20th boat. <laughs> 1997, Steve Rosenborg won it in Los Angeles, California. He was Angeles after the North America. Pete sailed the new design water rat. We still have one on the lake here. That's a very nice looking boat, and it, we thought it was a great boat. And the Swedes showed up with the Marstrom boats. The Australian came out with the Mark IV. I bought a new one there. And the Italians with the new BIMs. And Niels Bunkenberg was the lone German that with a BIM. And he slept in a trailer in the, in the, in the compound, right? No, on the tramp. Oh, whatever it was. But they gave him a room. It's but you could tell the man was come home. He had an A shaved into the back of his head. <laughs> with a double line on there. But here was the first time that you had a whole selection of production boats. Like I said, the, the Swedes came and the Australians were there, but they, they were all new fiberglass production boats. And I was very leery sailing out there because one time a container floated by me about two feet under water. You know, there was the hurricane had come through, and there was plywood in the water, and but it turned out okay. 1998, Ben won in his first blue water cat, water rat in Bristol. 1999, Jay Glazer on a water rat in Austin, Texas. I didn't go there. Did you go there, Ben? Yeah. Uh huh. Kinder. 2000, Ben won on his water rat at Key Largo. And I still remember he was so thrilled that he beat Pete Melvin. Most of us fell in love with sailing at Key Largo. 
and we have been back there many times. They have been in May. They're christening their first, what was it, the A2, right? A2, yeah. Yeah. Go to the next picture. Oh. You just leave it there. Leave it there? Yeah, 2001, Pete Melvin won again in, in Los Angeles. I did not go to that North Americans. Did you, Ben? No, right? No. No. 2002, Lars Cook had a flyer when we had the World's and Masters Vineyard. The Worlds were also held, and Glenn Ashby won. All I got written down here was a nice beach and nice sailing, but the logistics on that place were terrible. In 2003, we went to <laughs> Lake Pontchartrain and PZ Glazer won. After one day of waiting around for good weather, we had one day of carnage. And then we had one day of light air sailing. And here is how Danny came in. Oh, after man. being in the water for, I think, six hours. <laughs> and blew so bad, what, out of 22 boats, I think 10, 10 came in in one piece, right? It was 39 boats. 10, oh, 39 10 boats. Sailed in. Yeah. yeah. I made it. I made it. And they didn't have any, any yeah, you made it. They had, didn't have any crash boats. All they did is ran around and passed out anchors. <laughs> And everybody stayed, <laughs> stayed with their boats till they finally got to them. Dan, you fix that mess? Well, here's when Danny yeah. finally came in. Broken mask, upside down. Yeah. All right, go to the next picture. <laughs> That's the next day. See how tranquil it was? Coming in? Is that before or after? I'm standing on the That was after the, the, the bad day. Next picture. That contract place isn't there anymore. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you know who that guy is with the afro? And they made it on the front of Moldy Hall magazine. Next. There's a nice touch that we had the other day. Today again. That's great. Next one. And this is a bunch of pictures from from the midwinters down in Florida. So for the guys that have been there, look who's there. Oh, Chris. Chris. Yeah, Chris is fixing the sail. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Different hairstyle. <laughs> All right. Look who's in the lap I'm sitting on now. The <laughs> boxery. <laughs> There's us taking off for the midwinters. And Mr. Mark. There's Mark Scales. Yep. Whoa. I'm going to speed it. There's one of our picnics at PZ. Do we do we want Speedy again? Alright, there's there's here. Uh, Goran Mastro. He always travels light. Yeah. Same shirt. Yep. Same pants too. <laughs> All right. Look at this. Is that Tracy? It's Tracy. Huh? Hey, that's me. Look at that dentist, he's showing off his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> 